you're late. But if you cross my palm with caramel macchiato, I won't dock your wages. Jesus! Cheers, big ears. Hello everyone. You know these Mark V Mondeos? The more mileage they get on them, the more problems they're bloody getting. 16 plate, okay? It's got, I don't know, it's over 300,000 miles. It's got a few issues to say the bloody least. Let me show you. Now the story on this car is a little bit bewildering. This is like a classic case of there's half a dozen problems together all contributing to make one great big problem. First of all, the car came in, it was a little bit overdue its service, so it needs a service. But one, once it was here, there was another reason it was here. It had lack of power, like it was in limp mode. Well, it actually is in limp mode at the moment. But there was also no coolant in the coolant reservoir. We discovered that the thermostat housing, surprise, surprise, was leaking. So we are fitted a new thermostat housing. We also read the codes in the ECU. And a couple of the codes were, well, I won't read off the codes, I'll just say what they were. One of them was engine over temperature, which would kind of make sense because there was no water in the reservoir and that was leaking. So that, that would probably explain the engine over temperature, you would think. I'll come back to that. Also, the car is in force limited power basically, not just limp mode. Force limited power means that there is soot accumulation in the diesel particulate filter. So the only way I'm going to get this engine out of force limited power is to do a static regeneration on the DPF, which is the diesel particulate filter. So you might be asking, well why, why is the injectors out of the engine? Why is the high pressure fuel pump off? Oh my god. Well, on inspection of this engine, before we'd done a regen, we noticed that the, the, <laughs> the top end of the engine was very noisy and we could hear that the chain was flapping. And I've said this before, but if you pull, with the engine ticking over, if you pull the oil filler cap off and put a piece of paper over here, uh, generally speaking, if, if everything is fine, you'll get a few little spots fly out of here onto the paper. If the chain is flapping around and the tension is knackered in there, the timing chain tensioner is knackered, you'll get a heck of a lot of oil being sprayed out of, out of here. And it will literally make a big blotch on a piece of paper in next to no time, is what, and that is what it done. But anyway, it doesn't really matter. When we put a little pick in here, we could actually feel the chain was jiggling like that. It was so bloody loose. So we, we decided to abandon all the problems on this car the chain was the number one priority. There's no point doing a regen with a flapping timing chain. Something's going to give. So, there is the chain, which is still intact. It hadn't snapped. The actual tensioner itself, the bottom guide was perfectly okay, surprisingly enough. The spring, which goes inside the tensioner, that was okay as well, because these springs normally break in three or four different places. But all that was wrong with this tensioner, the top guide, the plastic nylon piece here, was completely gone. You see that little piece of metal there? That's snapped off nearly. So, and it's also completely gone this side. So there's a little piece of metal which has either disintegrated or gone, in, gone into the sump. There's, there's an oil wave, like a oil return part in, top, in this top of the cylinder head where the, the oil flows back down into the sump. I guess that's where it's gone. So. There'll be a few little particles in the sump. So anyway, that tension is knackered. So we've replaced that, new timing chain, new gaskets and everything. I'm still in the process of putting everything back together. But when, I'm, when I change a timing chain, I've obviously got to remove the timing belt. And while you're doing the timing belt, it makes sense to change the water pump at the same time. Where's my torch? So there's our brand spanking new water pump down there. All I've got to do now is put the timing belt back on. But come and have a look at this. Mm. 
There is our old water pump, and this one's got like a, it's like a black, dark blue or a black impeller on it. I've never seen that. But anyway, look, if I turn the impeller, which is a plastic impeller, I know you're gonna say, horror, why do Ford fit a plastic impeller on a steel shaft? You know it's something, it's a bloody nightmare rating to go wrong. But if I spin it, it spins okay. But watch this, if I jam that cog with a screwdriver, and then I can turn the impeller, it's like notchy. Now I've had these impellers where they're absolutely, completely just spinning freely, and that's, that's not moving at all. So this one was a little bit off-putting because it, it was like, the, the, it obviously was turning. And here's the thing, when these engines are running, the one way I've said in the past, you can test to see if the water pump is actually circulating the water through the cooling system, is through this little bleed off pipe here. This bleed off pipe goes round to your thermostat housing. But with the engine running, just ticking over, you can, if you shone a light through here, you can see the water flowing. If you pulled this pipe off, water would be flowing out of this pipe and into that bottle. If the water pump impeller was just spinning and not circulating the water, there'd be no coolant coming through this pipe. When we were running this car earlier, before I started changing the chain, there was water coming through here. But when, we, when the car was drove, it was like it kept coming up with engine over temperature. The temperature gauge was staying central and everything appeared to be okay. But obviously I'm getting the feeling now, because that water pump was at the point where it was still working a bit, it was, it was, water was still going through that little bleed off pipe, making you think that there was nothing wrong with the water pump. That water pump, faulty, obviously explains the engine over temperature. You see, this is what flung us. After we had fitted a new thermostat housing on this car and filled it back up with coolant, we ran the engine up and then Matey here took the car for a drive down the road and back. He must have done about five or five or six miles. And he reckoned with the last 300 yards before we got back here, the engine management light came on and it was saying engine over temperature. And now we're thinking, well, number one, it's had a leaking thermostat house and it had lost coolant to start with. So you would have thought that would have been it, but it wasn't it. It was still reading engine over temperature, obviously because this was obviously working when the engine's cold, but I reckon as the, as the, the, the load of the water that goes on this, it's, it's, it's actually not spinning the water properly. It's not circulating the water. And this is probably stopping when it gets hotter. So when the engine gets to a certain temperature, this probably is not doing really much at all. So anyway, I'm hoping that this water pump, the new water pump has cured our engine over temperature. But what I've also got to do with this car now is once I've put everything back together, like I said the new chain's in, the new tension is in, I've got to put the injectors back in, I've got to put the high pressure pump back on and I've got to time it up and then put all the wiring back on basically. Well, the engine oil's in, the coolant's in, I've rechecked all the wiring on the engine that I can see Everything looks in place. New fuel filter. So I guess it's time to turn the key over and see if it goes. You never know after like doing a timing chain or a job like this, that it's actually gonna run again or you're gonna have major issues after that. I've had a few instances in the past where we've had the injectors out. You put them back in and they just don't work again after that and you have to replace them. So uh, we shall see. Go round to the old ignition key. What's important as well, if it does start up, I want to see if the engine management light comes back on almost straight away. I have already switched the ignition on half a dozen times to prime the fuel through the low pressure system. But anyway, here goes. Oh, it's running. Yep, there we go. Look at that. Engine management light has come straight back on. I knew that was going to happen.
but it's running by Jove it's going <laughs> I always look underneath to make sure it's not a big puddle of oil you know what I mean anyway that's the result so anyway what I plan on doing now I'm going to run the engine up because you've got to get the coolant temperature to at least around about 70 degrees centigrade before you can even do a static regeneration on the diesel particulate filter. So as soon as I get it up to temperature, I might even take it around the block first, give it a little bit of a run. Then I'm going to plug the scanner back in, check the codes and then do a regen and hopefully that will bring the soot accumulation in the DPF down enough so we can switch that engine management light off and hopefully everything will be okay after that. I've just been for like a five mile run and I have to say for a DPF that's actually got too much soot in it and it's putting it into force limited power it still goes quite well and the engine sounds so much better after that chain's been changed it was rattly as hell before I know on, on video when you hear these engines they sound like a bag of bolts anyway but believe me it sounds so much better so what I'm going to do now the only way I'm going to clear that engine management light is to do a static regeneration on the diesel particulate filter. I've just read the codes again. Uh, the low fuel pressure is, I've just got to clear that, that's because the fuel filter has been changed. But this one, P2463-00, diesel particulate filter, soot accumulation, warning lamp on. So, what I should do, I know that code is not going to clear. So what I should do now with the old scanner, we shall start a going to functional tests, service functions. Come on, come on, come on. Diesel particulate filter, static regeneration. We'll click yes on that. Carry out this procedure, re regenerate. Switch ignition to the on position. Yep. Switch ignition off. Oh my god, it's such a procedure. Now actually, before I carry on and, and go any further, I'm just going to show you something, what I do, just to make sure. I'm going to start the engine up, and I'm going to put the air conditioning on. The reason for that is because I want to know that the cooling fan works. So if I come round to the engine, yeah, the, the cooling fans are working so I'm gonna what I should do is I will leave the air conditioning switched on all the time that way I know the cooling fans are definitely working ignition to the on position yep start the engine engines running press yes Engine coolant must be between 67 and 100. It's at 92, so I've just been for a good old run. So I'll press continue. Do not press accelerator, brake or clutch during the op procedure. Do not leave the vehicle unattended. Continue. Open bonnet to increase ventilation. Blah, blah, blah. Here we go. Any minute now. There we go. That's just taken the revs up. The static regeneration is underway. Now if you look here, it says DPF system percentage of the maximum soot loading is 174 at the minute. Uh, engine coolant temperature is one to watch, it's at 92. Exhaust gas temp, and it, then it tells you the temperature of the exhaust gas in the DPF. So that's, they're still quite low at the minute, 100 and 140. So what we'll do is, now we, all we can do is wait and let it do its thing. This has been running now for I'd say a good 10 minutes and you see the, the soot loading. Let me put this inside the car so it's easier to see. It's reading 200 
101 at the minute it went up to 212 so it's it's gone up a fair bit which was a bit worrying but now I heard the engine note change and it's starting to come back down again so it's 198 it's slowly making its way back down so now it's actually getting rid of the soot but when it went up some from sort of like uh, where was it 180 or something like that to up to 212 I thought oh, that's not good but anyway <laughs> it's definitely coming down now so I'll carry on letting it do its thing when these cars are doing a regen if any of you own these cars you'll know this when you because it's a it's a particular smell you come out it comes out the exhaust pipe it's really kind of pungent smell so uh <laughs> I can't see any smoke coming out, I doubt if I'll see that anyway, but, but when you get that funny smell coming out of the exhaust, you know it's regening. It's the waiting game! I'm just going to point something out here. On the soot loading, when it gets below 150, which it is definitely below now, it's 144, the engine light will switch off. Anything above 150, you won't be able to switch the engine management light off. So we're good now, it's 143. When this finishes, I want to kind of see how low the soot level is. This regen, it takes roughly around about 40 minutes. How's it going, dodgy painter? <laughs> right, let's see what the foot soot level is now. Woo! 42! 42! Engine coolant is at 99. Everything seems to be hunky dory. I'm impressed. It looks like things are working out, which is good, believe me. If there was a problem here, I mean sometimes you can do a regen and there could be something wrong with the car and it won't regen properly, the soot level will just keep going up. But in this case, well, I, I, was, I was pretty much hoping it was going to work out okay. The amount of money has just been spent in this car, <laughs> it's like, I hope it's fixed now. But we're down to 39 now, so uh, we're getting pretty low, which is good. But well, the engine sounds pretty sweet. No knocking, no rattling. And when I drove it a little while ago, it actually drove quite nicely. 320,000 miles this car's got on it. We're down to 33. <laughs> obviously when you're doing a regeneration you ideally don't want to be doing it on a hot summer's day and if you are doing it you need to have a big fan at the front because it can get very hot outside and you don't want to overheat your engine you don't want to get it that hot that the, the actual cooling fan on the car can't cope but today is sort of like 20 degrees if that so it's not too bad I'm also on tarmac which probably isn't the best thing. You'll be best on concrete, but they, they do say don't ever park the car on like long grass or anything like that because the DPF can get pretty damn hot and you could start a fire. So just park it in a well ventilated place on solid ground. I'm pretty sure that we're getting to the point now where it's going to switch off. Woohoo! We're down to 16! Holy crap! I'd say we've nearly got a totally clean DPF. Surely to God, it's going to end its regen now, pretty soon. Plus we've got we've got C manual now and the spanner light on the dash. The engine light that's not going to switch off until I actually clear the code in the ECU. But I have to finish this regen first. Down to, what are we now, 15? That's really low. Oh, there we go. It's off. 
switch ignition off it says right let me put this scanner back in the car it's a little bit bright out here okay it's done its regen so i've switched ignition off okay the static regeneration was unsuccessful now whenever i've done a regeneration we're using this scanner it's always come up with was unsuccessful was unsuccessful regeneration time exceeded allowable limit uh, don't worry about any of that uh, now the code is still present i've got to clear it now so what i'm going to do i'm going to go into our codes come on scanner unfortunately this this particular scanner after it's done a region it gets a bit dodgy it gets a bit flickery and dicey so let's come out of that we want to go to codes menu memory codes switch ignition on ignition on continue diesel particular fill with soot accumulation and force limited power the reason the spanner light when i was doing the regen remember i said at the beginning the soot accumulation went up rather than come down and then the spanner light come on that's because it put it into forced limited power because the, the soot loading went higher than it should have done it went a lot higher than it was to start with that's why it's put it into forced limited power and brought the spanner light on on the dash but now it's all come down to sort of like it ended up about 14 so it is well low now so now i can come out of this and I can clear these codes. Codes cleared. Switch the ignition off for five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Once I caught a fish alive. Then ignition back on. Okay. Now if I go back into codes, they should be clear. No codes present. But here's the thing. When I start this engine up, that engine management light should go out and it should stay out. There should be no engine management light and there should be no bloody spanner light either. Let's give it that fuel low. We know the fuel is low, god damn it. But there, no engine management light, no spanner light, no nothing. I'm happy, job's done. Well, not quite. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to go for a good run and just make sure. So, in conclusion, I've just done a 20 mile run in this car. No spanner lights on the dash. No engine management lights have come on. However, the low tyre pressure symbol beeped up on the dash, which nearly gave me a freaking heart attack. But apart from that, everything seems good. I took the scanner with me. I've read the codes when I got back. There's nothing. It's clear. No codes present. Now, I'm going to go back to the beginning now, because when this car first came in the door, there was no coolant in it. The flipping thermostat was leaking and it had engine over temperature and after we replaced the thermostat and put new coolant in the engine took it for a run again it was still saying engine over temperature but obviously then we discovered that the timing chain was loose so we've done that then obviously yeah the old water pump the impeller was spinning can you can you see it Although it's not as bad as what I thought it was going to be. So anyway, <coughs> that was a difficult one to diagnose actually, because like I said, when water, when them impellers stopped spinning, water would not go through the bleed pipe into the coolant expansion bottle, but it was in this car. So obviously when, the, when it was getting some speed up, it wasn't circulating the water properly, which was causing the temperature to go up too high. Although the gauge was staying okay, if you just looked at the temperature gauge, you wouldn't know there was anything wrong. But that's why it, that water pump was the reason why it was saying engine over temperature. But anyway, now we've found that, that's cured the engine over temperature problem. So uh, 
But this is this is the kind of thing you get when you get these cars that have got such high mileage. This has got 320,000 miles on it. And this is a typical example of what these cars happen when they come in every day. You'll get half a dozen things all contributing to one great big problem. And obviously the end result. Apprentice! Do you remember in the last video, someone said in the comments section, shut the up with your bloody tapping. Just, just let me finish this first. Right, he's shut up now. Yeah. I don't even know what I was saying now. But yeah, these cars come in with such huge mileage on them, they've got a whole host of problems with them. And this is the end result. Thermostat housing, water pump cam belt, timing chain. And of course, when things are wrong with a car, it normally ends up in soot accumulation, force limited power, and the bloody DPF is blocked, so you have to do a static regen regeneration. But anyway, it's all seems to have worked out now. Everything's fine, which is good. We can now move on to the next car, which will probably have a new set of problems on it. But I just wanted to do this video just to show you that I guess the main thing was one, the water pump, which can be a bit dodgy and misleading. And number two was to do a static regeneration. I've never done a regeneration on one of these cars and showed you, which I have done now, so there you go. So that's it. So guys, thanks for watching and till the next time, see ya.